thank you very much. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking forward to a fabulous program tonight and a wonderful dinner and some excellent company because there is nothing better than getting together with our fellow Democrats. Thank you. I guess. I've been told that I can't really get things started until everyone's seated. Okay, it looks like we're mostly seated, so we are going to move forward with our program tonight. It is a pleasure to see all of you tonight as we enjoy fellowship with fellow Democrats. Right? I know just about every single person in the room here, but I'll introduce myself. I'm Michael Blanton. I'm with the Cayman Islands Democratic Council. I'm on the uh, Executive Board as the Affirmative Outreach Director. And it is my deep, humbly accepted, and very last-minute honor to greet you all. Welcome to, uh, to tonight's 2013 dinner. Thank you very much. And it's also my honor to introduce the real kickoff professional for the 2013 dinner. It is my great privilege to welcome them. You're all waiting with anticipation. I'm trying to think of all of the adjectives I can add before you can hear Dan Sarah. She is the state representative from the 4th Barnstable District in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Jackson dinner. We probably know that he served on the executive committee of the uh, Stonewall Veterans. We might know about him that he has been the Grand Marshal of the Provincetown Carnival Parade. We might also know about him that every year he marches with the Stonewall Veterans in the New York City Pride Parade. But here are some things you may not know about Dave Velasco. <laughs> that he was born in New York City. He's a graduate of NYU. You can clap for New York City so long as you're a Red Sox fan. Yeah. <laughs> and you may not know what a musical talent he is. He has starred in his younger days, not that he's not still young, I think he's forever young, uh, in the hit musicals, The, uh, the Boyfriends, and hits of Broadway. And if you haven't had the opportunity to buy one of his CDs, I don't even know if he has them here tonight, he has produced a CD that Lynn and I have listened to many times. It's the first time driving home from a Jefferson Jackson dinner, as a matter of fact. And uh, it's Dave Sings the Best 
of Sinatra. But tonight, instead of singing Sinatra, he is once again going to guide us through this wonderful evening of rejoicing with our fellow Democrats, of uh, reinvigorating ourselves and uh, re-pledging to work hard for Democrats to elect and re-elect them. And especially tonight, we are going to pledge our support, our time, our effort, and our work to make sure that Congressman Markey becomes Senator Markey. <laughs> My great, great friend, Dave Velasco. I just love her. Are you, are you seven to Martin? Not yet. I never thought, not yet. All right, not, oh, you will be. I want to say hello to all of you. And um, since I call him Senator Marty. He's not from here. I want all of you to give him a, what you call a Cape Cod welcome. Yeah. I'm a New Yorker. We could do better than that. Let's do it again. You know, we had a little combo up here. Paul Nasseter's little combo, the trio. Uh, Paul, can you stand up, please? And your trio. Thank you. And I could not, we could not do this as we're doing this these years here at this wonderful hotel. As a matter of fact, it was just done over. It's a Hilton, and isn't it beautiful? And look at what they've done in here. Um, Elisa Upton, where are you? Oh, she's not here. She's the lady who um, is a sales manager. Without her, uh, we couldn't do this. She is so great. She does everything for us. And I just found out she was a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many years we've been celebrating this Jefferson Jackson dinner, but I know it's quite a few years. Diane, how many years? Uh, Kathy Oman, how many years? 50 years? Oh, 50 years. No wonder I feel I'm getting old. It's a, yeah, but how long have we been doing it? 1980. 1980? Sure. Okay. 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 By the way, where is my LGBT sisters and brothers? Let's hear it. Let's hear it! Before I start and I introduce my little committee, a lot of people have asked me many, many times, what is this little hat that I always wear? Well, I'm a Stonewall vet. I'm just going to tell you a little something. In 1969, there was a gay bar in Greenwich Village, and we used to be abused by the police and everything for years and years and years. Well, a bunch of us crazy kids did not take it. And we said, we're not going to take it no more, and we went at it. And to this day, we are like the Rosa Parks of the, of the, gay, of the gay movement. Don't I get an applause for that? Yeah. And the great thing that happened this year, you know, I've been to Soho Bed for Massachusetts, even though I'm from New York, but I've been living here for years with my spouse, Bob Isidore. Uh, I went to some kind of a transgender thing in a church. Dave doesn't go to church that much, but I went that year. <laughs> and my father was a preacher. I still don't go to her church. And this lovely lady gets up and says, I am so, you know, transgender and all. And she says, I'm a Stonewall veteran. Well, I thought I was going to die. I haven't met a Stonewall veteran in Massachusetts in 20 years that I've been living here. Erica, stand up. I remember Erica, now we're going back a little bit. I remember Erica, there was three drag queens. They were beautiful, but they were rowdies. That's why they were at the Stonewall, because they were rowdies. And Erica is now transgender. She's married to a lovely man named David. David? David. And she's 
join the CIDC. Hey! So I just want you to know that's what this means. So Bobby is going to put together uh, something uh, that you can all come and see me talk in Erica about 1969 rebellion in Greenwich Village. Uh, the next thing I want to say is, um, well, not really nothing. I just want to say that I, it's been a pleasure doing this for three years. It could get, I mean, I aged about 20 years, I know that. But I've had Diane helping me, and I've had some wonderful people helping me, that helps. And Bob is a door. But I have to say that there isn't one, the one thing I've got to say about the Democratic Party. When I call you, and I talk with you, and Bobby talks with you, and we want you to come to our dinners or our meetings, you're there. And I'm so proud of being a Democrat because of all of you over here. So let me now give my, uh, the next person who's coming up, right, is Mr. Bob Isidore, CIDC, President of the Cape and Islands. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Isidore, my spouse. And you know, I'm gonna get off the stage, I talk too much. Bob and I, Congressman, Bob and I, next year, will be celebrating 40 years together. You never give David a microphone. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. I'd like to have a, say a few remarks. Um, first of all, to recognize some of the folks uh, in the CIDC and the town chairs who have really gone out um, and done so much work for the Democratic Party and our candidates. Uh, we have our pe past president, Jim Mahoney, CIDC past president. <laughs> Town chair of the president, Janet Jochum from Barnstable. <laughs> Dalman from Chatham. <laughs> Patrick Burns from Venice. You brought your own fan club, huh? <laughs> We're not really here, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Ben, Mashpee. Robin Hunter from Orleans. Austin Knight, Provincetown. And Paul Hillahan from Sandwich. We also have some state committee members here. At, at a good good thing. John O'Brien. John Reed. And Richard Kendall. And you've already met State Rep Sarah Peak. We also have State Rep Cleon Turner and Brian Mantle here. County Commissioner Mary Pat Flynn and Sheila Lyons. As mentioned, State, uh, Senate President Therese Murray. Senator Dan Wolf. Former Senator Rob O'Leary. Congressman Keating and his wife Feathers. They really applauded the Tevis, you know that. <laughs> State Treasurer Steve Grossman. <laughs> and Deputy Treasurer of the National Democratic Party, Mike Link. <laughs> and of course, I guess the bottom, Congressman Ed Markey. And, last but not least, Chairman of the Harwich Town Committee, Ray Garwell.
Okay, um, like I said, we have to thank all of you, and not only the chairs, but all of you here, for all the hard work you've done. Um, as we recognize the veterans before, I think the best way to thank a veteran is for what you have done in the campaigns that have gone on, supporting our progressive candidates, working hard to be sure that they're elected, and keeping our ideals alive. Um, and as a veteran, I appreciate that as well. Um, I know many of you have done many things like phone banking. We have committees that have done nothing but phone banking, door to door, um, holding signs on street corners, poll watching. Uh, every single thing, every little bit counts and is important to us. And one of the most, I think, the hardest working Senate President we have ever had in the state of Massachusetts is standing right here next to me, Senate President Therese Hardy. So I get to talk to you while you're eating. Which is cool, that's fine. Uh, but before I begin my remarks, just want to remind you, I attended a luncheon today. Shh. Today is the 60th anniversary of uh, the Korean War. And I uh, was with the, uh, met the not only Medal of Honor winners, but the Purple Heart recipients. Uh, in Plymouth today at a luncheon, and that's right, you should clap for them. And there were two young men, it wasn't just a, a celebration for the 60th anniversary of the Korean War, there were two young men from Plymouth there, both injured in Afghanistan, um, who also received their Purple Hearts, and it was a very, very, very moving uh, experience. So we should thank our veterans. Thank you. to say a few words. Thank you to each and everyone here tonight for your commitment and incredible effort in helping Democrats get elected in the Commonwealth. Last summer and through to November, we worked harder than we ever have. And because of all that effort, your effort, we re-elected President Obama. Yeah. We've elected Massachusetts' first woman U.S. Senator, Elizabeth which continues to have a large Democratic majority. And on a personal note, I want to thank you for all of your help in getting me re-elected to the Massachusetts Senate. A couple of years ago, when Scott Brown was elected to finish Senator Kennedy's term, yeah, I know. Remember that. Remember that. It was a wake-up call for us. No matter what a poll says or what we're hearing, we have to fight to make sure that Democratic seats stay in Democratic hands. Hard work and focus certainly brought us over the top in November, but there was one other element that was a major factor across this state. And I, like many candidates, refused to run a campaign of fear-mongering, misinformation, and negativity. Instead, we talked about the issues facing Massachusetts. We talked about we have, what we have and will do to respond to those issues. We told voters who we were and what we were and what we stood for, and the voters responded. People are sick of negative campaigns. Massachusetts voters are too smart to fall for misinformation, and we saw that in this past election. I am proud of the race we all ran, and of the races that all of our Democratic candidates ran, because we ran on the issues that connected to voters. We ran on our records, and we refused to fall prey to the dishonest and deceptive attacks against us. And it was an exhausting campaign cycle for all of us, I know. But we cannot afford to rest. 
We need to find that secret pocket of energy, and we need to work harder than ever to get Ed Markey elected as the next U.S. Senator. This special election is a sprint. We need to, and I know you have been out there yesterday, holding signs, making calls, talking to your friends and neighbors to let them know why Ed should be our next senator. We have just over a month and a half. That's all it is, folks. A month and a half, and people are already election fatigued because the local elections are coming up, the town elections. Oh, that sounds like a lot of time. We all know how quickly that time flies. So let's keep pushing forward, and please, finish your dinner, and then let's make sure we get you on, on the phones, outside, in the streets, and let's win this election for Ed Markey. Thank you, Terry. Let's give a good hand to Therese Murray. By the way, we do have a silent auction going on here. Um, the items are laid out and the bid slips are there. Please bid often, 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 if you want me to bid. Thank you. Um, the next person I'd like to call up to the podium, State Representative Cleon Turner. Cleon um, has been such a great representative to not only the first possible, but all of Cape Cod and the state of Commonwealth. He's not only a good friend, um, he's, he's taller than I am too, so I get to be nice. But Cleon is here to present the uh, first award, the life, the... <laughs> the award to uh, Patrick Bresnahan. Good evening. Great to be here. And uh, I have the privilege tonight of introducing and presenting to Patrick Bresnahan uh, for his tireless efforts to empower and engage the public, young and old, to participate in the democratic process. And uh, as many of you know, Pat is the current chair of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee. Yeah. We're over there. <laughs> it's very simple to really describe Pat Resnahan. If you're from Polios and you're a Democrat, then you're related to Pat Resnahan. It's that simple. So Pat has been chair of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee since 2005. He's been active in, dem uh, active in democratic political campaigns, the earliest being uh, that of Maurice Donahue in 1948, who was the then sitting state representative for Holyoke, I would imagine. And he was running for the Massachusetts Senate. He won that race, later became the Senate president. And in 1963, Pat worked in the Chubb Peabody's campaign for governor. Pat was a regional advisor to Governor Mike Dukakis, worked on campaigns for Joe Ward, Frank Bellotti, Scott Harshbarger, Shannon O'Brien, Martha Coakley, Barack Obama, Elizabeth Warren, and of course, me. <laughs> Pat was vice president of the Young Democrats for JFK. Obviously, that was a while ago because neither he nor I are that young anymore. He was chair of Ward 7 Democratic Committee in Hojo. And Pat, you haven't been paying attention to how I've been pronouncing the town. I've been doing it right. That's because when I first got elected, you know, Pat told me that his favorite legislator was not me. It would happen to be a state representative from Polio who gave me a two-hour lesson one morning in the state house on how to pronounce Polio. So I can't get that wrong. So in uh, Ward 7 Democratic Committee in Holyoke in 1984 and was Democrat of the Year. He was very involved in various local campaigns in Western Massachusetts. That's 
our Pat Bresnahan. But he also is very proud of the fact that as chair of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee, he has led us in the Dennis Democratic Town Committee in supporting some very important local causes. Every Christmas, so members of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee ring the bell for Salvation Army at Stop and Shop in Dennis. Virtually every Democratic Town Committee meeting we have in the town of Dennis, uh, members of the committee buy the Stop and Shop food pantry cards to support the food pantry. And in November every year we have a food drive for the family pantry. Pat, come on up. for my family to get together. So uh, I'd like to introduce, and you can hold your applause or I'll get killed. I'd like to introduce my uh, daughter Kathleen and her husband, uh, Eddie Casey. Can I stand up? Nope. <laughs> uh, their son, Rory uh, Casey, and Rory's uh, daughter, uh, Rory's wife, Melissa, and their son, Patrick. Now, You'll notice Patrick will probably be working the crowd. <laughs> and then um, I'd like to introduce my daughter uh, uh, Eileen and my daughter Bridget. Bridget. And my daughter <laughs> Megan and my daughter Maura. <laughs> my son Terry, his wife <laughs> Debbie, <laughs> their son Kyle, and their daughter. <laughs> Did I introduce Hannah? No. And there you go again. And Dylan, of course. And Caitlin and Amelia. And last but least, I was going to say, uh, the woman I've been married to happily for 40 years, and then someone would yell, it's 55, and my comical retort would have been, yes, but the first 40 were happy. But I'm not going to do that. I like to introduce my best friend and my biggest critic, my wife, Barbara. Sorry, by the way, 
I'm going to introduce who I am because a lot of you have no idea. I am the state senator for the Cape and Islands, Dan Wolf. And just real quickly, as I thank Pat Bresnahan for the great work he's done for the Democratic Party, for the people who are not in this building tonight, for the people who are homeless, for poor people, for who, for the middle class folks who have been eviscerated over the last 30 years, for the people that we as Democrats, with our values, with our hearts, and with our minds, are going to try to make this world a better place, the leadership of Ed Markey and the other elected representatives here, hold us accountable for that. Because we have a lot of work to do. It is my pleasure. It is my pleasure to give this award to Pat Bresnahan, who has for years and years embodied and represented what we as Democrats believe in and value. So thank you, Pat. As if there were anybody in this room that did not know Senator Dan Wolf. <laughs> If you're in this room and didn't know Senator Dan Wolf, welcome, but you're in the wrong room. <laughs> so we have, we the Cape delegation, that being led by Senator Dan Wolf, who nobody knows, <laughs> and, and all of the uh, Democratic state representatives, um, we have a citation uh, that says, be it, present, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives and Senate offers its sincerest congratulations to Patrick Bresnahan in recognition of receiving the 2013 Community Service Award by the Cape and Islands Democratic Council. The entire membership of the legislature, not just the House, uh, extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. and he walked over to Pat Bresnahan, he would say the following. He would say, life is action and passion. He said, I think it's required of a person to be part of the action and passion of his times at peril of being judged never to have lived at all. No one has lived those words more effectively and will continue to live those words more effectively than Pat Bresnahan. I brought along tonight one of my proudest possessions. Pat will recognize this. This is the Holy Oak Tart. Every year in the Holyoke Parade, the finest St. Patrick's Day parade in the land. And so even though we're on Cape Cod, we remember that when you bring Holyoke values to Cape Cod, that is an unbeatable combination. I have a citation here which I will not read, but it talks about a lifetime of leadership. Pat, you do us proud, and your entire family does us proud and honors us by being with us tonight. Pat, thank you. And to the family of yours that is an entire precinct, evidently. So.
representative of We'll be presenting the next award. And Chairman Donald, I'd like you to say a few words as well. Thank you, Bob. Hello again, everybody. So, Ray, you want to come up on the stage and join me? And actually, after award winner, um, who is uh, being named the Democrat of the Year by the Cape and Islands Democratic Council, I do have a citation from the whole Cape delegation. So, if the delegation, including Senator Dan Wolf, would like to join me up here, that would be wonderful. Why don't you come on up now? Dan, Madam President, if you feel like it, Brian, all your names are, are on this citation, so uh, come on down. And by the way, I received a, a telephone call from Tim Murray, uh, Tim Murray, no, Tim Madden, uh, earlier today. He sends his greetings to everybody, uh, would be here, except uh, he had made a commitment months and months ago to attend a uh, dear friend's wedding. So, but he said, be sure to say hello to everybody. Representative Turner, thank you. Great. So, it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce and describe for you the great, great work. If we could just have a, a minute, you know, our next award winner has devoted years and years of service to this organization and to all of us here, and we as elected certainly stand in her debt. So it is my great honor to introduce and tell you a little bit about Sheila Bowen. Organization, the CIDC, for 20 years, 20 years plus a member of the CIDC, but not merely a member. Two years as the recording secretary back in the late 80s, early 1990s, and you know, this is when it was a tough time to be a Democrat on Cape Cod, by the way. Two years writing, collating, stapling, stuffing envelopes, and mailing the newsletter. You know, this was like before Al Gore invented the internet and we could do it all electronically. <laughs> Sheila was taking care of this for us. Six years as treasurer of the CIDC, organizer and chair of the Jefferson Jackson dinner during this time. She ran for the state committee in 1988, and uh, where's the Falmouth table? Because that is the only town that didn't vote for her. Well, sorry, next time, right? It was, a, it was an oversight, and it was many, many years ago. Uh, for over 20 years, you're from Plymouth, Madam President. It's okay. You would have voted for her. I know you do. Over 20 years involved with the Harwich Democratic Town Committee, chair of that committee, vice chair of that committee, once, many, many years ago, and again now, when she needed to step up into a leadership position, Sheila serves as the vice chair of the Harwich Democratic Town Committee. And let me just throw away the notes for a minute and talk about my friendship with Sheila, how wonderful she is, not only in democratic circles, but this is a woman who is an activist, who cares dearly about her community, and I've also learned she is somebody you cannot say no to. So with that, I give you Sheila Bowen, our Democrat of the Year. I just I want to mention a couple of things. Um, uh, Sarah alluded to the fact that Sheila uh, was the Jefferson Jackson chair uh, for several years, and I think one of the things that, that's really great having all the Democrats in the room and the Democratic state reps uh, during the, the time I was president and Sheila was doing the dinner. That was the year that Rob O'Leary got elected senator, and that was a, a, a big deal. And I think. Way before then, there were a lot of Republican reps on the case, and I think the work that Sheila did set the tone for electing all the Democrats we see on the stage here tonight. So I, I want to personally thank her for that. And, uh, you know, 
and uh, when I moved to Shield, uh, Harwich, I met Sheila right away. Uh, we actually were doing a visibility for Shannon O'Brien at the Orleans Rotary. Uh, and I also want to finally acknowledge her work. Whatever you think about wind power, Sheila Bowen built a Cape-wide grassroots organization called Windwives. And uh, I'm really proud of her work. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Cape and Islands Democratic Council, here is your Democrat of the Award, Year Lord. Would you like to present the citation that the entire Cape delegation has signed on to? Madam President? I get to do this because Sheila happens to live in my hometown of Harwich. I'm sorry for the rest of you, but the only town that Matt... I shouldn't say that. There I go again. Okay. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, and of course, the Senate. We are hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives and the Senate offer its sincerest congratulations to Sheila K. Bowen in recognition of being named the 2013 Democrat of the Year Award by the Cape and Islands Democratic Council. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all the endeavors I know that will be applicable here. It's signed this fourth day by Robert. Robert DeLeo, Sarah Peake, so it's signed by all of us. I'm not going to read us all. Big hug. And now, Madam Award winner, the stage is all yours. <laughs> well, I think I'm out of words, so I don't know. Um, I guess. I, um, I really want to thank you for this honor, especially to stand among all of you who have done everything, as Pat said, everything I've done. But, um, I, but I also really like this honor. <laughs> I, I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. Um, Thelma Goldstein always says she was born a Democrat, and I'm not sure if I was born one, but I spent my whole life as one. Um, and I always felt the principles of the Democratic Party really drove my life. But I didn't get deeply involved until as an associate member of the, Dem of the Harwich Democratic Town Committee, I went to an issues convention in Springfield. And I mentioned to a gentleman who was at an anti-war table that I was concerned because I didn't have the words to tell my son that everything was going to be okay. He was very worried about our president, Ronald Reagan, who was rattling the saber and challenging Russia. And he was afraid that he was not going to live to be an adult. So I asked this stranger what I could say to ease his mind. And this man, who I've never seen before and will never see again, told me that the best thing I could do was to fight and to let him see me fight for his future and for the future of the country. with both feet, and there have been a lot of rewards, but um, I hate to say this, but you know, one campaign kind of runs into another after a while. There have been so many, I, I don't think, I was going to bring all the buttons, you know, and wear them all, but I, I thought that might be a little too gaudy. <laughs> but what stands out in my mind will always be with me are the people in this room. I remember trips to Boston and to do visibility. I remember trips to New Hampshire to work for John Kerry and Michael Dukakis and President Clinton. I remember 
West Coast to Washington to stand with my daughter Sheila as a mother and daughter against the war. And going with the editor. until they moved it to the community center. We had a great spot where you could talk to everyone when they went to vote. So we had great visibility, so we won for 14 hours. And what stands in my mind was the people who stood with me. So I will always remember everyone in this room. And I'll remember the people who have gone before us and have passed away. Because they'll always be in my heart. person in the room tonight because I said to her when we walked in, I said, Sheila, are you going to mind it if people shower you with praise? She said, I will not mind in the least. <laughs> and you deserve it all. You know, there was uh, one person's name who was mentioned in Sheila's remarks, and I want to just pick up on that. I think we'd all want to do that. There's one person in this room, at least, that I know of who voted for Franklin Roosevelt for President of the United States. That was, where's Thelma Goldstein? Thelma... And I, and I mentioned that before I present this citation to Sheila because fundamentally we're here because of our values and fundamentally what everything Sheila said is all about her values and our values. So I think it's important to remember those famous words that really are the watchword of the Democratic Party. These are words that Franklin Roosevelt spoke at our second, his second inaugural address 76 years ago. He said, the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, but whether we provide enough for those who have too little. Too few jobs, too little education, too few civil rights, too little hope, and too little dignity. Sheila Bowen's entire career and her entire life has been built on the notion that if there's a single person, a single neighbor, a single friend who lack hope and dignity, her work was not done. Sheila, we love you, we respect you enormously, and I'm proud to present this to you. Uh, Sarah Peake said that you're a person that no one can say no to. So Ed Markey and I are going to bring you down to Washington. We have some Tea Party people. We want you to meet. And I bet that they won't say no to you. So are we booking a flight? We're booking a flight. Congratulations and thank you very much. And Sheila, apparently there's one last award. You had kind words to say about Etta, but while you were speaking, she slipped this tiara to, to me and told me it's tradition to pass it along. So here, Princess, is your tiara. It is my privilege to be standing here at the 2013 Jefferson Jackson Dinner, the Cape and Islands Democratic Council, with our Cape and Islands Democratic Council President, Mr. Bob Isidore, but also, hot off the primary win, Congressman Ed Markey, running for Massachusetts Senate. Thank you so much, Congressman, Thank for being you. with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's our deep honor. Bob, this is fantastic to have the Congressman with us future senator, and we are going to give him all the Cape and Island support. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you feel coming straight off with the primary win? 
Well, um, I campaigned for 12 to 14 hours a day for four and a half months to win the primary. Uh, and I got up the next morning and I've been going straight through. I took no days off since the end of December and I will take no days off until June 25th because the Republicans will not win the Senate seat here in Massachusetts. Well, you, we're depending on you to bring us that win, and I'm sure you're depending on us to help you with that. So I know that's part of the message, is reaching on out to the constituency and energizing them to get out and vote and certainly support you. You've been uh, a fan of Cape Cod for such a long time. Can you talk about some of the things that, that bring you to the Cape, that you love about the Cape, and that you'd support about Cape politics? Well, of course, the, the Cape is a very, very special place. It's iconic. Um, we, as children, all saw the Kennedy family at Hyannis Port, and uh, and uh, it it made this kind of an iconic part, not just the Massachusetts, but of the whole country. Absolutely, and I think of it as an attractor for the whole country to come to Massachusetts. That the Cape is part of that. So it's my honor, you know, to be able to run for the Senate seat because, you know, since 1952, when Jack Kennedy won the Senate seat, until today, we've had four Democrats in the Senate. We've had Jack Kennedy and Ted Kennedy, and we've had uh, Paul Songus and John Kerry. All with strong ties to the Cape and Islands area. And so it's an honor for me to be able to run in that tradition to partner, hopefully, with Elizabeth Warren, Warren in the Senate to be able to advocate for our state in the uh, 21st century. And we couldn't be proud of the job that Senator Warren has done. I had the, actually the, the great honor to have her in the same spot last year as candidate Warren. It's a good omen. It is a Excellent. very auspicious omen. We'd like to think that this is a lucky spot. And and one one thing I could say, um, my town, Yarmouth, uh, you actually, Yarmouth is a very conservative town, but you garnered almost double the amount of votes that the Republican candidate did, besides beating your <clears throat> opponent as well. So. Well, I hope that the uh, I hope the past is prologue. I hope it turns out that way, but I know that the key is going to be hard work Absolutely. to accomplish that goal. So I'm going to be down here over and over again campaigning, and it's a thrill, actually, to have been invited to this uh, Jefferson Jackson dinner. And we will evening. look forward to inviting you to coffee hours, to parades. We would like to see Beautiful. you down here as often as we possibly can. Now, on the Cape, I know that you have been an ardent advocate for environmental issues, not only in the Commonwealth, but also nationally. So we're excited to see Thank an environmental environmental activist working for this. Um, do you want to speak about some of the campaign issues with regard to the environment? Well, I, that's a good point because let's just think about this for a second. If Hurricane Sandy that devastated New Jersey and New York, if the weather pattern was slightly different, it could have been us. It would have been all the way from Provincetown up to Newburyport. Absolutely. And $65 billion worth of damage was caused. And it would have been a generation before everything was put back in place again. And we know climate change is playing a big role in making the oceans warmer, and as a result, uh, higher, and as a result, much more likely to precipitate these kinds of superstorms uh, that we have been seeing. And if one of them ever hits Massachusetts, it will be devastating to our culture. Especially to us right here on the Cape where we stand at the vanguard of reception. So I want to make sure we put in place the preventative programs that reduce dramatically the greenhouse gases that we're sending up there, the red, white, and blue CO2. And then we can basically say to the Chinese, the Indians, the Germans, and others, you must stop as well. You must reduce dramatically. And you've been an ardent advocate on those globes. So at, uh quite a bit of success speaking with regard to education reform. Did you want to talk about that? Well, you know, um, education is uh, central. We, the kids are only 20% of the population, but they're 100% of our future. Uh, I went up to Boylston Street right after the uh, marathon bombing, and I was looking at the site where it occurred, and I looked across the street, and across the Boston Public Library, for a whole block, the inscription reads, the Commonwealth requires the education of its people as the best protection of liberty and order. So we can't retreat because the Founding Fathers knew what was right. We just have to keep investing, make sure every child gets a skill set that they will be able to take anywhere around the world for the rest of their lives. And, uh, and sequestration, this crazy program, cuts education. Uh, we'll cut 109 teachers of the Massachusetts uh, school system, cuts a uh, head start, cuts programs that are really central to the long-term well-being uh, of our country. And as a, as a veteran, uh, as a veteran, I know you've been uh, staunchly aggressive. Well, I am involved. actually not a veteran. 
Oh, yeah, no, I mean a veteran fighter for oh, political ideals stage. here in the see. Commonwealth I for see. us in the, in the national stage. Can you comment a little bit about the gridlock in Congress and the difficulty that you've had that you see? Uh, well, these Tea Party Republicans, they don't believe in government. You know, there's a Republican paradox now that they don't believe in government, but they have to run for office in order to make sure the government doesn't work. And so that's our dilemma. That's our problem. And so we have to try our best to uh, defeat as many of these Tea Party Republicans as possible uh, so that we can make the system work again. Government has to work to take care of the problems uh, that affect every family in our country. You've done an admirable job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much for all of your work. Thank, Thank you, you so for coming and seeing us on the cave. We will see you several more times I appreciate during it. the appreciate it. election Thank cycle. You so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time. And Thank you. Thank you.